You know, sometimes we get so caught up in the can we do something, we never stop and think, should we do it? We've been talking a lot about APRS spotting for POTA recently on the channel. So I'm at Huntsville State Park, and we're gonna see if spotting yourself over APRS when you don't have cell phone coverage, because everybody says, oh, if you don't have cell phone, you can use yourself to spot it on APRS. Okay, well, we're gonna find out. The closest digipeter to me is 20 miles south, which is that way. So we're gonna see if APRS is still stupid, which I think it is, or if we can actually send a spot over APRS, this time on Ham Radio Tube. Here is the stock Yesu FT5D. I do have an extended battery on here, but we've got the stock antenna, and we're gonna go ahead and hit transmit just like that, and see if we can spot ourselves POTA. And there you can see we've just sent that message. We have four more transmissions, but we did not get an acknowledgement from the Digipeter. And now some of you are probably saying, well, Mike, you gotta use a better antenna than the rubber duck. Well, I thought of that. So I brought out the Signal Stuff signal stick. We'll go ahead and transmit again. And we do not have an acknowledgement from the Digipeter, so no spots. See, no acknowledgement. Now, if we do hit the Digipeter, we will see a message just like this that KM4ACK sent me that will let us know that we're actually getting into it. We are not seeing that now. Now, some people have commented, oh, you can use APRS to hit a satellite if you're lost in the middle of nowhere. Well, guess what? I brought a frickin' Yagi. You think you're really gonna try and hit a satellite to spot yourself POTA? Come on. That's not very realistic. How are you even gonna know where it is? You ain't got no internet. But I brought this along just for the naysayers. We're gonna point this south. I'm gonna point it a little up in the air. See if this works. Message is sent and we get nothing. Let's do it again. Send it one more time. Done. Nothing. Again, no acknowledgement from the Digipeter. So now some of the APRS purists might be saying, but Mike, height is might. What if you get an antenna up in the air? Well, I thought of that too. I have a 12 meter spider beam mast fully extended with a Farajay J-pole all the way up 40 feet in the air with Messi and Poloni Potaflex 7 coax. Let's see if we can hit it now. And transmit. and no acknowledgement. See that in the glare, how it says no acknowledgement? There's nothing there. That means it didn't work. So all that, five watts through an HT, there's probably still some naysayers that could say, yeah, but you could have a mobile radio that's 50 watts that can do APRS. And would you believe I thought of that too? So here we have the ASU FTM 300 set to high power on my Comet CA 2x4 antenna that is connected to the front of the car. And we will go ahead and transmit this message. There we are. And no acknowledgement. Still not hitting the Digipeter with 50 watts mobile. And there we can see the spot did go out. We have four remaining uh, transmissions, so I'm gonna wait until that's done, and then we'll try our final test. And there we are. There are no more transmissions left. Here's the POTA spotting page, and I am not spotted there at all. Oh, hey, there's KAPZN. Nowhere. No spots, no acknowledgements from the Digipeter. Nothing. So that only gives us one more thing to do which is connect our J-pole that's 40 feet in the air to our VHF radio with 50 watts and see if that'll work. So here we go. We're gonna go to function, APRS, message list, and I can just resend this message simply by hitting retransmit. And there we go. There you can see four of five. We can go back and there is the new list and we are sending and still not getting into the Digipeter. So there we are, guys. I tried. I really, really tried. I threw everything I had at this 
to get a spot with APRS to POTA. We tried an HT with a stock rubber duck. We tried a better antenna. We tried a Yagi. We tried a J pole up in the air. We tried a mobile antenna and we tried 50 watts with a J pole 40 feet up in the freaking air. Doesn't work. And I was really optimistic. I wanted this to work. I really did. I was like, maybe, maybe APRS doesn't suck that bad after all. But here we are. So twice now, I have disproven the effectiveness of APRS. When every single video you watch is from someone who likes APRS, what do they always reverberate? If you don't have cell phone signal, you can send a message with APRS. There's a catch to that. You can. You can also walk outside and get hit by a bus. You can also win millions of dollars in the lottery. It doesn't mean you're going to. Is it a good tool to have in the box? Good? Probably not. It is a tool, but it would probably be like using a butter knife to cut hardened steel. Not to mention the incredibly terrible user interface that you have to deal with just to send a message. I mean, it'll legit take you a couple minutes to scroll through the, 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 no, the knob on the FTM 300 or using the terrible touchscreen on the FT 5D. It's not even worth it. It is such a waste of time. Just call CQ. Now, there are easier ways to send APRS other than using the radio's interface like the MobiLink and things like that, but that's beside the point. The signal didn't get out. And obviously there's more variables than this. If you live in the middle of the desert on the salt flats of where are they, Utah or whatever, and you've got line of sight, sure, you probably could. But this is a real world experiment. I used what I feel any ham who's out doing a poda would have with them, probably even more than that, because people probably don't carry tape measure Yaggies with them to their poda. So I feel this is a pretty legitimate test. I'm sure the APRS community is going to go crazy and leave all kinds of funny comments in the comments section for me to add to my next stupid videos video. But here we are. So remember, all of this is about spotting for parks on the air. It doesn't make any sense to me. Even Jason, KM4ACK, said he wouldn't do this, and he's like the APRS guru. Parks on the Air is so vast now, do you even really need to spot? If you call CQ long enough, people are going to hear you. And then you can ask someone that you're actually talking to, who's probably sitting at home, who has a computer and has Wi-Fi, ask them to spot you. Using APRS for spotting is just dumb. So once again, I have proven that APRS is not a very effective mode of communication. And in my experience, APRS is very unreliable. So the one key takeaway from this, I'll leave on a, on a, on a positive note. The one thing that we learned from watching KM4ACK's video about POTA spotting is that heat map from APRS.FI. If you're going to a POTA location that you suspect might not have internet and you actually know where in the park you're going to go, you could use that heat map or the APRS.FI map to find digipeters that are near the park and then uh, by clicking on the heat map, you can see what that radius of range that particular digipeter has. So you could possibly have the chance, if you just got to spot yourself, to spot yourself over APRS and get in that digipeter. So tell me I'm wrong. I love it. Guys, thank you so much for watching another experiment. My name is Mike K at MRD. This is Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time.